Do you have a little property and you're looking to make a little deck extension off of your existing house? Not sure how to do it? Can help you draw plans and an architect and an engineer can help you draw plans. But something that's always helpful is to see a finished product in reality. Now today we're taking a look at a little bit of an older deck addition, but it's got some components that are still in use today. The first one is the use of a six by six post as opposed to a four by four post. Six by six posts are now almost widely required in each district and including by your insurance. Another thing a six by six post does is allow you to notch out for your beams. In this case, we've got a single two by 10 that's connecting post to post, column to column, and a six by six allows you enough width to have a butt joint and still get your bolt through to the other side. The next thing is once you have your rim board, rim joist, your outer support, you've got your upper deck joist, ceiling joist, depending on your type of construction. And these are spaced at 24 inches on center. They're two by eight because they span the, this distance. It's a little greater than 10 feet. And they come back in here to connect to the outer rim joist or rim board connected to the other post just inside of the existing home. And what this does is having the post here versus connecting to your house, it makes this entire structure independent of the home. This is especially important in wind zone regions where this entire structure needs to be weighted down by each of the footings underneath each one of these posts and the wind is pushing up on those footings independently of your existing space. In this case, it's a tiny home, so there wouldn't have been enough structure inside the home to attach to anyway. And they were able to get their joist in, angle it, and then do their flashing detail for their existing roof onto the new roof so that you don't have a water intrusion problem. Now, this one's a little older. Some codes would require this to be 16 inches on center, but again, it's not supporting any weight up above. So that can vary based on your district and the latest adopted codes and even what your inspector might require. But the last thing we wanna look at is that this deck is about three feet off the ground and they've provided a convenient stair option and wheelchair accessibility. Or even if it's not a wheelchair, you're rolling up a cooler, you're rolling up some other items and they've made this deck so that it's dual function for both step access and rolling chair. The last thing is when your spacing gets above 30 inches right here, that's where you have to start getting this railing involved. And railings are a whole different component for guardrails versus handrails versus the spacing that's supposed to be required. Again, not pointing out this home, this one's a little older that we're taking a part of today but this is just something that's really neat and that helps explain what all those little drawings, the Simpson strap connections at every joist, how it should be notched out to help carry the loads of the two by rim joists coming across. And this will help you make sense of all those little lines and notes on a piece of paper as it comes to reality. I'm Leslie and I hope that helps.